many different social movements uh, have been fueled by group singing. Um, that was certainly true of the ability of enslaved African Americans to keep hope and a sense of connection alive during the period of enslavement. Um, it was certainly true of the union movement. The early union movement in the late 19th century and early 20th century was a singing movement. They sang songs together in their union halls, on their rallies, on their picket lines, that kind of thing. Um, the civil rights movement obviously was a classic example of a movement where people sang together. I had the experience while I was doing voter registration in Mississippi in 1966 or 60, yes, I believe it was 66, uh, of every evening in the community we were staying in, we went to a community center and people came together from the neighborhood and sang freedom songs with us and taught them to us. And it was clear that the music was deeply infused with their sense of purpose and what they were doing uh, in that particular uh, area for uh, standing up for change in a time that was very, very dangerous. They could have been killed for it. I mean, for one, I think songs just are a very easy way to transmit a message. Um, you don't have to have a lot of resources to, to write a song or create something like that, and it, it's something that's easily, you can spread it around, so I said it's core level, it's just a really good way to spread a message. Um, and again, I mean, music connects people, and when you're already connected by a cause, um, you know, it's sort of a double level of connection. <laughs> and then also, of course, a lot of you know, a lot of oppressed groups share certain cultures. I mean, for example, like African American um, spirituals often double as, or double as, or are in the same style. The protest songs would be the same style as those spirituals, um, and and because of that, that cultural, um, because of the culture behind it. You know, the culture behind it lends itself to singing. I guess <laughs> the only protest song that just popped into my head might not be a protest song. It's a song that we sing in church. And I, and I realized, oh, maybe 10 years ago, that it was a song that they sang, um, I think, for the bus boycott. And most of the protest song, this one that I'm thinking about, is more not about the protest, but about the hope of being out of some kind of turmoil. It's called um, I Am Bound for the Promised Land. So the promised land for Christians is when we, when we die and we go to heaven and that's the promised land and everything is great. But they, they probably marched with that song because it was a hopeful song. I'm not there yet, but one day I will be. You know, one day I'll be treated better or one day I'll be allowed to vote or whatever I'm protesting about. When I began to get very politically active in the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement, the music of people like Pete Seeger, if I had a hammer, of Peter, Paul, and Mary, of Bob Dylan, of uh, Woody Guthrie, those kinds of people really, really, um, again, shook my heart. Uh, they, they gave me a sense of what I needed to do with my life and doing it with other people. So singing again on the uh, on demonstrations and big rallies. I remember singing with up to a million people at the Washington Monument at huge um, peace, peace marches during the Vietnam War. I spent the summer of 1968 in Washington, D.C. during the Poor People's Campaign, right after Martin Luther King was killed. And that uh, there was, I don't know, a couple thousand people, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, gathered in Washington to try and fight for justice. And what they would do is that each night they would do huge rallies in giant churches in Washington, D.C. And people like Jesse Jackson would basically preach and basically call the, the empower the group, but also it would be huge use of song. And when I saw the movie Selma a few years back, the thing that struck me most strongly about the movie is what was most of the movie was very true to that period. But they weren't singing. And I, I don't know why they didn't use song, because they wouldn't have had those big meetings in the churches without song uh, being very much interwoven into what was happening. And I know a lot of people, when they write protest songs, are trying to rile people up. But to me, the best protest songs are the ones that, <clears throat> I think Bob Dylan was one of the great 
protest writers because times are changing. You could sing it in 1962 or three when you wrote it, and you can sing it today. There's no shelf life on it. It's not about a specific thing. It's about emotionally, this is how we feel about what's going on in the government. Instead of here specifically, you know, he doesn't mention Johnson or, or Kennedy or the civil rights movement. He just kind of says things aren't right. If you look on the internet for the Justice Choir, it's a group of current musicians who are pulling together a body of work that, that are current to be used in protest movements or things, for, things working for justice that are meant to be sung by groups at situations like that. Maybe the term protest song is, is antiquated, but there are always songwriters writing about injustice and how they feel the world could be and should be. That still exists. I think of, uh, um, oh God, I'm so bad. Is Audrey Day? Uh, Audrey Day. I Rise, fantastic song, fantastic singer. That'll always exist. That will never really go out of fashion. Just the term protest song is maybe out of fashion. I haven't listened well enough to a lot of uh, younger artists to know. Um, uh, Annie DeFranco is somebody who comes to mind. She's probably a close to 50 now. I don't know. But she certainly was a person that went right into that world. She, 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 she was, went right into it. And uh, an artist like Mary Gauthier. Uh, I, but I don't know, I've never been very comfortable with the, the term protest music uh, because I think, say, a song like We Shall Overcome is a very, very positive song. And I don't think of it as, I think of protesting as almost somewhat of a negative energy. Um, there is an element of that in it. You're, you're sort of pushing something away in a way. And a song like We Shall Overcome doesn't do that. It invites you in. And I think that is much more a uh, successful approach myself. I just want a more positive way to get through these issues. And that point of view song I wasn't trying to tell anybody what to do, except that it, couldn't we just try to put our, each other, see things from someone else's point of view, put yourself in someone else's shoes, and see if you can understand what makes them do the things they do. And they have the same issues, they want to raise their children, they want to, you know, it, when you ask anybody what they want out of life, it's almost always the same. So what's the problem here? And there are a lot of people that exploit those problems and differences and make a career out of it. Uh, and I don't find that they're very helpful. And I, I, want, I just have to be positive about things the way I work. And the artists that I like are like that. This is a song, uh, the lyric came to us from uh, B.D. Love, who we've collaborated with in the past, he's a poet. And uh, when I read the lyrics um, that he sent, I thought of Mahalia Jackson first off, because it's a, uh, it's a social justice song, and I wanted to set it in that old time style, which is so nice. Um, get everybody singing and clapping kind of thing, and it goes like this. One, two, three.
when I first started looking at the impact of social change music, um, you know, that goes beyond just kind of singing about something, but has to get applied. I mean, I cried over Malcolm Moore's Same Love. Cried. Um, uh, my jaw dropped at Beyonce's Lemonade. Um, I was blown away by Gaga's Born This Way. Stunned. And, and part of it was, was this part of me that was very, um, I don't know, old-fashioned about these social change, that when, which is when I started to recognize, wow, social change music has come a long way. Because um, it's not, it's not, I mean, there's plenty of social change music that doesn't paint a pretty picture. Um, uh, I remember Johnny Clegg, you know, so I'd seen Johnny Clegg when he came to, to, to Dartmouth, and he just had some great things to say about that. Um, uh, and, you know, there's Odetta, and there's just, folks have really kind of explored that. But those modern, those modern pieces of um, music and impact have, have been really profound for me, um, really profound. And, and I've struggled with them. I've struggled with, and one of the caveats we put out with Music to Life is that whatever music comes through must be redemptive and must be um, sort of humane. Um, but that, so therefore, where does a piece of more strictly protest music or, or rallying cry music come in? Um, uh, who, you know, who did Cop Killer? That was a pretty impassioned and certainly valid expression of frustration. Um, it's not a song, it, in, in my mind, it, it, it's, it's, it's challenging because it does not build the kind of bridges that we want to build. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's an interesting kind of world to, to walk in, but I think as long as we sort of push, as long as we lead with kind of redemption and bridge building, um, and not, not whitewash that, but, but just but genuinely, like, where is this getting? Like, so for example, somebody could come to us with a song about, I want to keep my baby. I mean, Madonna did. Um, so, uh, you know, but they're not saying, go bomb the abortion clinics. You know, so I feel like there, there's an opportunity for this kind of music to, uh, to engage us in, in a healthy dialogue and an, and an exploration. Because that you were asking about what this music does, and I feel like, you know, this lyric-driven social change music can, you know, again, with the right talent behind it, and I don't mean celebrities' talent, I mean just with the right piece of music around it, can help us just sit there and go, wow, I never thought about it that way before.